Well, hello folks, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl, and I am finally home from my excursion to Record Store Day. And boy, it was quite the day, let me tell you. I was out the door at 7 this morning, and I got a chance to be on Adam at Record Crate Show. He was so nice to invite me for his morning coffee and vinyl, and we chatted while we both drove to the record store. It was a lot of fun. I got to chat with uh, Adam and, of course, uh, talk about records and, of course, his folks that were lining up at his store. He had some people pretty early. I think he said one person got there at 4 a.m. at his store, which was fantastic. So that was very exciting. So I drove over to Eraser Records. Now, uh, the way Record Store Day is, and I see folks joining. Hi, Benny. Hi, Karen. Hi, Susical. Uh, the way Record Store Day uh, works is that there's a set number of releases uh, for certain titles, and if it's an RSD Day exclusive, it is only for this day. If it is one that's not RSD Day exclusive, they might be able to do another release at some point. More of them might come out, but then you're not getting the first press, which, you know, of course, vinyl people really, really like. And uh, so I got up this morning at 8. No, I got up at 7. <laughs> 7 this morning. It's been a long day. Got up at 7 this morning. I chatted with Adam uh, from Record Crate. I was on his coffee show on the way to the record store. We were both on the way to Record Store Day. And then I uh, was there by 8 a.m. I was there by 8 a.m. at Eraser Records. Now, they don't open till noon. But, yes, I was waiting five hours in the heat out in the Florida. He was 98 today. Gosh, it was a scorcher, but I was waiting outside uh, all that time. And luckily, guys, I was first in line. And of course, obviously, because they only have so many uh, releases and so many titles and, and certain record stores are only able to get so many of each copy, it's really a big deal to be first in line. If you know your record store only maybe has one or two of what you want. Because if you're fourth in line and say the first guy wants what you want, then you don't get it. So I was really, really hoping I would be first. And I was. I was first in line, which was very exciting. Uh, I was camped out. I had my lawn chair, you know, the whole thing. And I was waiting. And, and, you know, the cool thing about Record Store Days, it's not just about getting the releases that you want. It's also about meeting uh, cool people in the chat, talking music. And there were some great folks in the chat today that I just met and enjoyed. We talked about concerts and about records and releases we're hoping to get. And, you know, I quickly found out that none of those people wanted what I wanted. So I felt really good about it. And I called ahead. Now, this store did not post a list online like some of the other st stores were doing. Some of the other stores had listed, you know, hey, we, we got these titles in. They don't typically say how many they get. Uh, usually they'll just say, this is what we have. And then people line up. And so I called ahead and Erasure had told me that they got one Elton John. So I was like, okay, they have one Elton John. Yesterday and today, another record store in town was open and they did have Elton John. But their record store day is always crazy. And they told me they had already had 20 people lined up at 6 p.m. the night before, camping out all night to get records, which is typically what happens at record store day. Um, people camp out all night. Uh, if you look up Amoeba in California, one of the world's largest record stores, it's absolutely insane. Like people bring tents. It, it's just, but it's fun. It's so much fun. And so people were camped out, and I thought, okay, there's no way I'm going to get out and John. There's no way. They only got a couple of them, probably. And then Young Loud and Snotty did reopen, which is great, the uh, record store I normally frequent. But they only had like four or five titles because they were new uh, coming back in, and they kind of missed out on getting all of the releases. And there's a new store that opened, Tiger Records, but they missed the cutoff, so they weren't part of Record Store Day this year. So long-winded story to say I decided to go to Record Store Day at Erasure Records, and I'm glad I did. I was first in line. I met some really great people. We had a good time chatting. They actually had a band, live music, at the venue, which was pretty cool. They had axe throwing, if you wanted to do axe throwing. They had a whole vintage market set up behind with food trucks, so after you shopped for your records, you could go out back like it was really fun and uh, I didn't do you know all that because by that point I was just exhausted from being in the 98 degree heat for five hours <laughs> 
but it was nice and store owners were coming out from there was a cleaners next door and i think a shoe repair place that had opened up and they were coming out offering us bottles of water the funny thing was is there was about probably 10 or 12 people that came by during the course of my sitting out there for five hours that just lived in the murray hill neighborhood of jacksonville which is where this record store is located and they all were just like, why are you people out here at like eight in the morning sitting in chairs? The people were just staring. One guy even drove his car around like twice and was like, why are you here? He yelled out the window and all of us were like record store day. And the guy's like, you're buying records, but records are already like available. He just was so confused. I think people don't realize that they actually are making new records now. There are vinyls coming back and records are still available to buy, not just vintage records, but new records. So I was very excited about all of this. It was just a fun day. Vinny's joining us. Linda's here, classic old soul. Jamie's here. And I was talking with Jamie's husband, Blake. We were messaging back and forth today and Blake did get what he wanted because he had messaged me and was like, can you get this jazz record if I can't? And I was going to be on the lookout and he was looking for Alton John for me. So it's kind of fun to have friends in the uh, VC vinyl community and uh, vintage community that go to Record Store Day and can kind of keep an eye out for you for le releases that you may not be able to get. So I was lucky. I got everything I wanted. I'm sorry for the people at uh, Erasure Records that were behind me that may have wanted these titles because they're not going to get them. I, I bought the last ones because uh, I was first in line. I was I was lucky and I was there fair and square, you know, and uh, it was just really a, a great day. And, and they let three people in at a time. Three people go in. You can chop the, the bin. You, you buy your records. You leave. Three more people come in. And they do it in order of the line, which is really nice because that's fair. You know, it's like first come, first serve. And uh, by the time I left, I think there was about 40 people in line outside. Now, I've, I've heard that at uh, yesterday and today's, the downtown record store, they got over 200. 100 people in line and uh, the guy that was next to me Jack he was so nice he said I was there at four in the morning waiting and I was like ninth in line and I didn't get any of the releases I wanted but he said the guy next to him had brought a recliner <laughs> a big no joke lazy boy recliner from his truck and set it outside and had been camping there all night, which is what people do. It's, it's kind of insane, but people are so friendly. There's not any like trampling or like Black Friday craziness. It's like people just very friendly music lovers just having a good time. So yes, I'm glad that we, we both got what I wanted. So uh, seven minutes into me rambling and just sharing my day, I'm going to actually show you the records now. Now, I have not gotten a chance to unbox these, so you guys are getting an unboxing live, which is pretty cool. The first record I got is Link Ray, and I'm very excited about this record. I had, this gentleman had been recommended to me by several people. He's a uh, late 1950s, early 60s guitarist. Uh, I believe he's from Germany, if, I'm, if I've got my facts right here. And, of course, he's a fantastic guitarist, just absolutely amazing. And I think he was going to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't know if he has or not. But this album that is released uh, is one that was released many years ago, but it was very limited quantities, and apparently it's quite rare. I did see one, I think, going for 900 or something like that for an original press of this. So it's pretty cool that they're actually re-releasing this on vinyl so that all of us that want to enjoy this can actually get a chance to listen to it. So I'm very excited about that. This is on colored vinyl, which is always fun when it's on colored vinyl. And I want to say there were 1,300 worldwide of this. Worldwide. That's not U.S. That's worldwide. 1,300 of this was a super limited record so i was thrilled to get it and i was the last there's the last one in the bin <laughs> so i'd gone through the whole bin didn't think i would get it found it was very excited and of course i snatched it up i think most of the people in the line were looking for um lincoln park and then the police of course that was going to be a big release i knew People are going to go nuts for the police. I think there were two people uh, looking for Lincoln Park, two for the police, a lot for Ariana Grande. I don't know what she was releasing. Um, 
because I don't necessarily keep up with the modern pop music, but she had a release that was coming out and people were very excited about that. So there was a lot of people not looking for what I was looking for, which was kind of good. So we're gonna unbox this now. I'm just taking this out of the shrink. And this is pretty exciting. Of course, I save all my hype stickers. I don't know if you guys do or not, but I save my hype stickers. Hi, Blake. Blake's in the chat. And I'm so glad. I'm so, so glad, Blake, that you got what you wanted. That is wonderful. Congrats on that. Oh, yeah. That's a good uh, police song, Benny. It really is. So this is Link Ray. Uh, really fantastic. Oh, look at this. This is nice. I like when they have the poly inner sleeves because they prevent static. And I switch all my records to uh, poly inner, inner sleeves anyway. So it's kind of nice when I don't have to, to spend one of my, uh, put one of my expensive ones on. I already have one because they're not the cheapest things to buy. Oh my gosh, guys, this is incredible. This is trans. I didn't even know this was translucent vinyl. Oh man. Okay, this, this wins the day. This is pretty slick. I gotta say, translucent vinyl is awesome. I have a live uh, from London Chuck Berry album that I was lucky to get a few years ago that's clear translucent. And it, I mean, it is just a cool vinyl. So this has Baby Doll. Now, I'm wondering if uh, uh, Link Ray had covered some of Chuck Berry's songs because I think he had a Baby Doll song. Run, Boy, Run, I Want to Get Married, Mashed Potato Party. A lot of people did that. Walking down the street called uh, called Love. Remember the twist. A lot of twist songs from the 50s and 60s. I need someone like you. Young hearts, blue eyes, love me forever. I'll do anything for you. And if this is wrong. Now, this is mastered by Joe Lizzie. And I'll be honest, I, I don't know much about um, his mastering. But uh, someone out there, that will mean something to them. I'll definitely do some more research here. So this is exciting. That translucent is really slick. I got to say, it's pretty cool. <laughs> oh, he's unboxing his records, too. Oh, that's awesome, Blake. That is fantastic. Yeah, very cool. My Roger Waters, The Wall Live in Berlin is clear translucent, too. Oh, that's awesome, Blake. Yeah, the clear is, the clear is pretty slick. That is just, I got to say, that's cool. Hi, Proud American. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so the next album I got is, of course, the one that I had talked about a lot that I really wanted, and this is Elton John, Regimental Sergeant Zippo. Now, most of you guys have probably never heard of that, and that's because this was never actually released. Elton John was uh, had this out. It was his first record uh, in 1974, I believe. And the record label felt that there was not a hit on it and there would no be, not be any uh, singles, nothing uh, from it. So they shelved it. It was ultimately a shelved album. And now all these years later, we get this album on vinyl, which is fantastic. Now it has been leaked on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube and actually hear this record. So if you guys are seeing this today in the video and you think, oh, that's cool, I'd like to hear it. Well, you can. You can go to YouTube and listen to the whole album. And let me tell you, I love Elton John. And to me, this is arguably one of his best albums. That That's just my opinion. Other people might fight me on that. But I, I listened to this. I thought, oh, my gosh, this is incredibly good. This is very psychedelic, psychedelic rock, you know. Awesome, awesome stuff. So this is really good. Um, the hype sticker here says that there was, uh, let's see, uh, how many of these? Uh, there was 1,500 of these released, which is exciting. This was recorded in 1967. Oh, 68, it says. Interesting. I had read something about 1974. Maybe I'm getting my, my dates wrong. Maybe it was set to release in 1974, but recorded in, in 1968. Uh, but this is Regimental Sergeant Zippo. It's a really cool cover, very psychedelic, pretty cool. Uh, one of my favorite songs is Tartan Colored Lady. Uh, so if you get a chance to listen to this on uh, YouTube, highly recommend Tartan Colored Lady. And of course, When I Was a Teal by Abby is fantastic. Regimental Sergeant Zippo is good. Dandelion Dies in the Wind, uh, Set and Doing Nothing, and The Clock Goes Round, Hourglass. I mean, this just is phenomenal. So I'm going to unbox this here. Now, I don't know what color this is. I think it's a standard black vinyl. 
uh, I will definitely put uh, some of this on Instagram if I can. Hi, TC. Welcome. How did you? Oh, no, you did terrible. You didn't get it. What did you want, TC? I'm so sorry. TC, my other record buddy, might have not gotten what he wanted. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, that's horrible, TC. Uh, well, I have to say, TC, I did really well. I got everything I wanted, and I was first in line. So I'm sorry you didn't do as well. Uh, but that's the gamble with Record Store Day. You know, you go and you hope that they they have what you're looking for, you know, and you hope that you get it. And there's not someone else that gets it before you. I've heard so many stories of people walking into the record store and they see the person coming out with the last one that they want. And it's like, no. <laughs> so I know how that is, but I am very, very excited uh, that I got all of these. I have to say it was worth getting up extra early. Um, now next year, I don't know if this Record Store will gain more traction and if they will post uh, their releases. Because I was talking about that with several people in the line and we had kind of decided that there they, they were surprised like I was that there weren't more people. And more people started coming in in the last couple of hours. But, you know, we figured that because they didn't post what they had, people were like, oh, I don't know. They're going to have what I want. I'm not coming. And so maybe after all those other record stores, they went and they didn't have... Uh, what they wanted, they kind of came over here. I think that's what happened. So it kind of worked out for us. So I have to say that was good. Oh, no worries, Bob. I'm glad you saw my post. Uh, let's see. Uh, TC had seven things in his cart, but it wouldn't process for almost 45 minutes. Holy cow. I only managed to get two things, but they're both on my must-have list. Okay, well, that's good, TC. That is good. And you're going in person in July. Good. Yeah, there's a second drop. Record Store Day uh, usually happens in June, and then they do a Black Friday. But this year they're doing June and July. So I think it's July 17th they'll have another drop. So there'll be more records coming out. But these are the ones you could get today. So, all right, we've got Elton John, Regimental Sergeant Zippo. Again, I'm loving these poly sleeves. I think they're really nice because, you know, I, I probably spend $25 for a pack of maybe 40 poly sleeves. And poly sleeves, you don't have to have them, but I like them because they prevent static and they prevent scratching. And sometimes just a paper sleeve is just not as good. And so I really like the poly sleeves. Yeah, this is a standard 180 gram. Um, black vinyl. But what's cool about this is this is actually mono. So this is not stereo. So this is definitely before uh, stereo. Um, this this was released uh, on mono, which is in mono, which is awesome because mono has I don't have a mono cartridge. So I'm sure that I'm hearing a fake version of mono. You can go down the whole rabbit hole with that. However, I think mono is really interesting to listen to and it's cool. So I'm very excited. This is in mono and mono basically is, is not stereo. And I can, I can explain that further in a different video for all of you guys that, that want to learn the differences of mono and stereo. But, but think of, um, monos coming from one channel as opposed to two. That's my quick explanation of mono. Not great, but, but that kind of helps. So this is Regimental Sergeant Zippo. I like that this side kind of has this mint color, and then you've got that uh, other label that is pink. That really matches this album cover really well. This is so cool. So for all of you guys just joining, this is very special because this is a limited release. There was only about 1,500 copies U.S. released of this. Um, record stores weren't getting a lot of them. I know that uh, my buddy Adam at Record Crate didn't even get an Elton John, I don't think. So this was really cool to get. And it was a shelved album. It was never released on vinyl or for the public. Uh, the record label didn't feel like there would be anything good off of it. And so Elton John went on to have plenty of other hits and lots of albums, but this just kind of got shelved and pushed back. And Finally, now they're releasing it. Of course, you can go listen to this on YouTube. The whole album is leaked. I guess that's what, what the, they would say is it's leaked for YouTube. But, of course, that's probably not in um, mono. It's probably digitalized and compressed and all that. So it's kind of really fun to have the vinyl. So this is exciting. Um, so I'm very excited uh, to have this. So this is great. And the poly sleeve. Yay for the poly sleeves. I got to say, that's 
that's really nice. And you, you should get that. I think if you're paying $30 for a vinyl, you really should get the nice poly sleeve. So this is pretty cool. I, I'm one of these weird vinyl people. I save all my hype stickers. Blake and everybody else in the chat that <laughs> goes to record tour day. Do you, like, cut off your hype stickers or save them? Because I do. I like the little hype stickers. I think they're fantastic. So that's exciting. Mono cartridge. Okay. With old mono records. Oh, good to know, Blake. Yeah, I've heard people debate on whether you need a mono cartridge or not. The cartridge is basically, you know, the part that has uh, the ability to transmit all of the data from the needle, you know, because when the records are pressed, all of that information is in the grooves. And then the needle picks it up and sends it through the cartridge, which then sends it through the tone arm, and it's technical, but then it goes through the speaker, your preamp, your amplifier, your speakers, the whole thing. So uh, you can change cartridges, and, you know, certain cartridges might have different sounds and produce different um, things you can change to improve your sound or or make your, your vinyl better. Uh, but ultimately, people debate on the whole whether you need a mono, dedicated mono cartridge for mono records. Anyway, that's getting more complicated than most of you guys probably care about. Uh, and we're not here to debate anything. We're just here to look at some fun records. So here is Sun Records having a party. Now, this is really cool. Every year, Record Store Day, the folks at Record Store Day put out a release uh, from the Sun catalog. So they go through the Sun catalog and they pick a lot of unique uh, records um, that are typically, I find a lot of them are pretty hard to get on vinyl these days or they were really released on 78s. And uh, last year, I think they did a blues release. So it was all really incredible blues. Um, and it was just great. I loved it. So I always, always pick up these uh, record store day uh, releases. I think they're fantastic. They're from the Sun catalog. And I believe that record store owners get a chance to vote and put in their vote what should be on this. So it's really curated by the folks at Record Store Day and Record Stores all across the country, which I think is awesome. And I just, what what's on this this year is fantastic. So this is having a party. And it says, welcome to the party. The Record Store Day release is for everyone ready to shake off their blues and dance. We've compelled the dance floor fillers, underground hits, and unreleased rarities from beneath the Sun catalog. And so what's on here is amazing. So they have Motor City Funk from the Bright Lights, Jerry, Jerry Lee Lewis, Friday Night, Slim Rhodes, Romp and Stomp, which is fantastic. Of course, Roscoe Gordon's on here. I'm going to shake it up. Uh, Linda Gale Lewis, Frank Ballard is on here. Uh, more of Motor City Funk, Soul Suspects with Funky Drop. Fantastic, fantastic. Groovy Train, Let the Good Times Roll by Alvin Robinson. Carl Perkins is on here, Drink Up and Go Home. I mean, this is like absolutely phenomenal stuff that's on here. And if you've not heard any of it, highly, highly, highly recommend uh, the Bright Lights Motor City Funk Part 1. Just incredible stuff. So this is uh, curated by Sun. It's a really cool little album cover. And I like, I love the hype sticker. This one was $14. The Elton John, which I did not mention, was $33. And this one, uh, yeah, this one was $30. For that, in case all of you guys are wondering the prices of record store day. Hey, Tiger. Yes, I wish. I was going to wish you a great record day. Thank you, Tiger. I appreciate that. Hi, Sharon. Yes. Ah, come on. Too much tech stuff. My ears are bleeding, right, TC? Hi, Picasso Cat. Hi, Nate. Is Nate here? Wait a minute. No, I, I somehow read that wrong. Anyway. Uh, yes. Hi, Suzical. And yes, I love Elton John, too. I've been very fortunate. I, I've seen Elton John. I saw his farewell tour. And I also saw him with Billy Joel. So I was I'm very fortunate to see Elton John twice. He's just amazing. So this is what you get. You get this really cool uh, little cover here. Very mid-century wasted, Jamie, who's in the chat. This looks like your, your logo. Let's see. What is it? Uh, pull up a chair, pour a martini, pull up a chair, 
something this is mid-century wasted i'm doing just as bad as fat bird finds trying to say your intro i used to know it but anyway uh definitely go check out jamie and mid-century wasted she's awesome but this cover reminds me of mid-century wasted in your little uh, martini glass so that's fun and this is on black vinyl i don't think this is 180 gram doesn't really matter just pointing out that some of the record store day releases always you know advertise their 180 gram just the weight of the vinyl and this is just cool i love that they've kept with the classic sun label a very very classic nice shiny black vinyl i mean i like the colored vinyl but sometimes black vinyl is fun too because it's just standard so a lot of these are uh, releases or songs rather that are on this album that are pretty hard to get there's some rarities on here there are some ones that, that the vinyl uh, is just impossible to find there's some i think that were originally on 78s which i don't even have a way to play 78 so this is really cool to get a release like this because you've got uh everything really really nicely packaged and you've got a fun little comp album so this is just a comp but it is really fantastic, put out by the folks at Record Store Day, Sun, um, from the Sun catalog, which Sun is fantastic, always love Sun, so this is great, Department of Record Stores, now this one had about, let's see, I think I, I could be wrong, don't quote me on this, but I think there was about a thousand us there was three thousand worldwide so in the world of records that's still pretty limited so this one's not as easy to get it's kind of a limited thing and this i believe is an rsd day exclusive so you can only get this today and of course you can get things later online but people tend to jack up the prices so it's better to go in store and get them jamie's here <laughs> it does it reminds me of your logo i'll i will get that right jamie it's something like pull up a chair pour a martini this is mid-century wasted let's go thrifting this is i don't know i can't do it jamie does it great it's jamie's intro for her channel anyway so that's what i got i'm very excited uh i have not listened honestly to a lot of uh link ray so i'm excited to give him a listen some more and delve into his music this is going to be really fantastic because this is a pretty rare uh, album and i'm glad that they're re-releasing it this was on uh sundays i think is the label for this so that was exciting and there were only i think 1300 of that that's us so that's pretty hard to get and then uh the elton john love regimental sergeant zippo fantastic album that was never released definitely worth listening to go to youtube and listen to this because it is available to listen to online and is fantastic and the link ray let me just show you this again for everyone joining late because this is like amazing this clear translucent vinyl is just incredibly cool like i didn't know what color it was going to be because sometimes on the website record store day when they do their releases they don't they give information about it but they don't tell you um necessarily everything that you're wondering sometimes they say it's colored but they don't say what color sometimes they say that it's going to be purple splatter using that as an example sometimes they don't so it's just where it depends so i was really glad to um open that and discover the translucent vinyl and do what bob he he knows a lot about early uh rock and roll too because we both share the love for 50s and 60s music and he's saying that Link has an unusual voice. So I can't wait to listen to that, Bob. This is going to be great. Yes, I am ready for a dance party. We're going to have a big dance party over on Instagram, <laughs> jamming out to some um, Motor City, uh, Bright Lights, Motor City Funk, which is just phenomenal, a great, great song. So this was a great day. Love Eraser Records. If you are ever in the Jacksonville area, go check out Eraser. They are fantastic. If you're in the area and you're still looking for certain releases, I'm pretty certain that yesterday and today's the downtown record store is probably going to be sold out of everything, given that they had so many people in line waiting. They even had people, like I said, overnight. So that's probably not a good place. There was about 40 people in line when I left. 
at Eraser Records, so there's probably still some titles available, but I wouldn't say a lot. And then you might have some luck with a few limited titles that uh, Young Loud and Snotty did get, but they didn't get as many. Uh, there's also Here Again Records in Gainesville, but they the, um, they had a long line. The third guy that was in line had a buddy over there waiting in line, and, and he said uh, that he was 25th, I believe, in line. So they had a pretty big crowd as well. So lots of um, rare and unusual and hard to find uh, releases that were coming out for the day that I hope a lot of people got. Um, I know there's just there were so many titles coming out today, and some of them are fairly obscure, and some of them are a little bit more common. I think uh, the Lincoln Park. I was looking at that. I think there were eight thousand copies of that uh, UF, so that's not as limited. So hopefully, all the people in the line uh, that I talked to that were looking for that were able to find it or can find it at some point because I don't think that was as limited as <laughs> some of the records I was looking for. Yes, I am. Yeah, I think a Coca-Cola and a nap might be in store. Few vocals, mostly instrumental. Well, really cool, Bob. I, I can't wait to listen to it. I can't say that I, I knew a ton about uh, Link, but I had uh, heard a few of his things and people had recommended him to me. So I definitely wanted to pick this up because I just think it's a cool release and I can't wait to give it a listen, of course. Uh, it will be fun. Yeah, it was hot. I will say 98 degrees in, in Florida is just not fun. <laughs> it is not fun. I, I definitely will say it was worth doing it for the records. I would do it all over again for the records. But if it were something else, hmm, would I wait in the heat? Probably not. No, let's just be real. It was so hot. It was like going to Disneyland in July. And you just, when you came, the first thing I did when I came home, I did, I was so excited about the records, but I got in the shower. I was like, I, I got to I got to get clean. Like I just felt gross. <laughs> and so it was so nice. Take a shower, get some water, uh, get something to eat. Cause that was really nice and go to the bathroom. Cause there weren't bathrooms, you know, that's, that's also the thing when you wait in line, it's like, what? What do you do? And then you're worried, you know, if you leave the line, like, what if somebody takes my spot? But typically that doesn't happen. People are so friendly, you know, at Record Store Day. Like, when I had to go to my car, the guy that was waiting uh, behind me was like, oh, yeah, I'll watch your chair. No problem. Like, people are just so friendly. It, it was really great. The weather sounds horrible. At least it's a nice day here for everyone else waiting as a... Yeah, Jamie, at least it's nice. I was talking to Sean, who has got a channel now, uh, Spinning TV. And, oh, man, it's, it, it got really windy outside all of a sudden. Sean at Now Spinning TV, he's in Australia, and he said it was freezing cold, blizzard, and rain there. So that doesn't sound very fun. But I think I would rather the cold than the heat, because I just don't do well in the heat at all. Just checking the time here. Uh, so, yeah, it definitely was a hot day, but it was worth it, and it was fun. And you build a certain camaraderie when you're standing out in the line. You know, you're all hot and sweaty, and you, you just get to know people, and you build that camaraderie being hot all together, you know. And I'm sorry that my computer's moving around, but I'm balancing it on my lap so I can show you these records. Normally, I'd be in front of the Coke wall, but I'm a little tired, so I decided just to sit on the couch where it's comfortable. Picasso Cat, oh my gosh, it's 110. Oh, they, they say the dry heat. Yeah, but it's still heat. It's still hot. He, he said, you live in Florida, Katie. You knew what you were in for. Yeah, I did. I did, TC. You know, I knew going into this, I would be hot. So I had sunscreen. I had an umbrella in case it rained and also to, you know, ward off the sun. I had my lawn chair. Well, actually a beach chair. <laughs> And I had water and I had snacks. So at least like I was set. And then I brought my charger in case my phone died. Like I just planned to camp out there, you know, and, and I, I think the eight was a good time, but it was humid and the sun was just coming in. They didn't have an awning where I was. So the sun was just like ah, right in your face. <laughs> so I'm glad I had the umbrella because I was holding the umbrella like, you know, at least trying to get some shade and then um 
they had vendors coming in to go out back for the uh, vintage fair. That was part of this like a record store day store that they were doing. They had like vendors and axe throwing and they had games and it was all part of something the record store was also doing in addition to record store day. So they had people that were going in and out of the, the store and every time the door would open, all the cool air would come out. I was like, just, Hold the door open a little longer so I can get a breeze. Yes, it was a small festival of sorts. Yeah, it was, and it was just cool. I, you know, I always say it's fun when you get what you want. Obviously, everybody wants a certain title, and everybody gets really excited when they get it. You know, but what's cool is getting to chat with people from all over the place with different backgrounds and different tastes and interests in music and just get to talk music with people that love music and love vinyl and they, they get it. And it's like you found, you instantly become a little community. You don't even know these people uh, from the beginning and you just become friends with them. Like in three hours, four hours, whatever it was, I was waiting. Well, actually five, cause I think I was there at eight. You just become friends with these people and it's just it's it's fun it's just so great it's just a great little day so i love that we can all uh celebrate music together yes yeah that was neat when you said like first 20 people or not yeah it was and that was cool because sometimes um in years past there's been a lot of people that have wanted the same titles uh, usually at Young, Loud, and Snotty, there's a crowd that shows up for just soundtrack releases, which I think is interesting because I, I always see the soundtracks. I don't think I've ever bought uh, one of the soundtracks, but I know there's a big vinyl community out there that just loves soundtracks from movies and scores. And they, they always do some really cool releases for uh, Records Were Day for that. But it was neat this year seeing uh, different people. I think uh, Chromatica was one that people were after, Lincoln Park, The Police, uh, Ariana Grande. Was there a Lana Day, Rel Lana Day uh, Ray release or something I think someone was after? Um, so it was just fun. It was just really fun. It was worth bearing the heat. <laughs> <laughs> to get the records and good to check out a new record store because I had never been to Erasure Records. I've driven by it. I knew where it was. It's in the Murray Hill area of Jacksonville. And now we're getting like clockwork, the afternoon storms. So hopefully they've moved through the line and, you know, people aren't waiting out in the rain. Um, but it was a neat little record store. So I'm glad I went. They also have books. So I think they're like a book and a record store. I didn't have a lot of time to explore because when you go in for record store day, typical record store day fashion, they're trying to move people fast, you know, through the store so that they can get people in and get people out that way. You know, people aren't waiting outside in the line, you know, they're trying to move it, you know, at an orderly, but fast paced fashion, you know? So I didn't feel like I, I could or should just linger around, you know, and look around. I felt like it was like, you know, okay, we're in, we're out. And they didn't really have a lot of bins to peruse. They didn't have other bins uh, with records. So I think that what they had on the floor was mainly just record store day. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's just fun. Believe me, <laughs> Cali. Yes, I know. Uh, California is very expensive to live. Yeah, and in this weird COVID time, too. It is. It's a strange time. And I felt really good about what the store was doing. You know, I felt safe. Everyone was six feet apart in the line. People were spaced apart. The first three people I talked to were all vaccinated. I was vaccinated. Not trying to get into a debate about all of that, but I'm just saying for me, because I am being careful for myself and my own health, I felt really safe about how they were doing it. I felt that it was uh, organized well. It was, you know, safe. They had, you know, they were just trying to make it great for everybody, which was great. The Shrek soundtrack was very soft and interesting, Jamie. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, sometimes I skim over the soundtracks because I'm usually not interested in that. So I couldn't say that I, I paid too much attention to what they had for that. But interesting, the, the Shrek soundtrack, that's, that's really interesting. Yeah, I could not live life without music. Life with music is just so much better. It's just, it's, it's, it's really, really wonderful. 
Yeah, it is. It's a cool, and it's kind of like vintage industrial boho. You'll see. I, I do film a little bit, and I have a vlog, a record store day vlog coming out. So I'll be sharing that soon. It will probably be uh, up on this this Friday, uh, my regular Friday vinyl video. Uh, will come out because on Wednesday I've got a video coming out. I'm participating in Bath Carolina Sweet Treats and Pretties a $10 thrift challenge. So I'll be doing that and sharing some vintage things. And then Friday I'll have my, my vinyl video come out and I'll be sharing those things. And oh, hey, Poodle's in the chat. Poodle, elderly Poodle's son, I believe works at a record store and was hoping to get a few things. So I hope that your son got what uh, he wanted, Poodle. I've been thinking about that. Jamie says, uh, clearly Canadian. <laughs> uh, oh, we're talking vintage candy. Oh, yes. Okay. Mmm, sweet. Yes, I could go for some of that. Uh, elderly Poodle, since you're just coming in, I'll show you what I got. I got uh, the sun having a party. Very excited to get that. I got Link Ray, which is phenomenal. Very excited about this uh, rare uh, re-release. And this comes on clear translucent vinyl, which let's just all admire, admire this again, how slick that looks. I mean, that is just super cool. And I got out John Regimental Sergeant Zippo. So lots of fun, fun releases today. I'm very excited to spin some of these. I think they'll be fun. And I, I will do my best to share a little snippet on Instagram. YouTube won't let me share these for copyright reasons. Uh, so I think Instagram's a little bit more lax. So I might be able to share a little snippets here and there. So you'll be able to hear these things. <laughs> oh, good. He got everything you wanted, Poodle. TC, yeah, I'm sorry you're the one in the group that didn't get everything. But at least you got two on your must-have list. That's really, really good. I'm glad. Oh, your son got Link Ray this morning. Oh, how awesome, Poodle. That's fantastic. I'm so glad he got it. I didn't even think I was going to get it. That's why I didn't even talk about it much leading up to Record Store Day because I thought there is no way that there's 1,300 copies released give or take. I mean, that number is, is there on the Record Store Day website, but there's always a give or take. And I didn't think I'd get it. And then I saw it in the bin and I was like, yep, <laughs> I couldn't pull it out of the bin fast enough. <laughs> And yeah, and that's right. You don't give up. You just keep going to other record stores. I, I thought that was so cool that the two guys I met in line this morning, Jack and, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm forgetting your name. You're probably watching this later, <laughs> screaming at the TV. Uh, but we were talking, and they had come, like I said, from one of the main record stores downtown. They always get, like, hundreds of people for record store day. And they said they almost gave up. And then they said, well, we'll just see what else is in the area. And they found this store, and they had exactly what they wanted. So that was really cool. I'm glad that they, they got their titles as well. And one uh, of the guys I was talking to was from Georgia. So he drove all the way from Savannah to here, which is only about two hours. But it's, it's still quite the drive. I was considering at one point if any of the record stores here didn't have what I wanted, I was considering driving to Gainesville or up into Georgia because there were some record stores that had quite a few of the Elton John in Georgia, but I really didn't want to drive all that way. So I was really glad this worked out. Oh, we got missing links. Yeah, there was there was one person in the line looking for, for that uh, poodle. And a lot of people wanted a Lincoln Park. I don't know if they got that because they didn't have this record store didn't have the list they didn't say like what was available they just said we have hundreds of titles that was all that was their whole advertisement um i knew they had the elton john because i had called but they didn't tell me that they had the others you know so it was very like well let's just go see <laughs> And I got very lucky. So it was a good day. Lots of fun. Lots of music loving folks there. Just a great, uh, awesome day in celebration of records and music and vinyl. And I hope you guys spend something awesome. I am going to go uh, get some rest, get, uh, listen to some of these vinyl because I really just can't wait. I'm like a kid in the candy shop. I got to go throw these on the turntable and uh, give them a lesson. So guys, thanks for tuning in. And I hope as always, you will stay in, stay safe, and pet YouTube. Bye-bye now.